Well, hello and uh, whatever. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, <laughs> maybe even good night to everyone. This is um, the first official Stern FX Live uh, with me and some wonderful guests that I'm going to actually invite right now. Thank you for everyone who is joining in. This is obviously being recorded, so if you're watching the recording, um, hello to you as well. It's even better. But without further ado, we have two very important guests or VIP guests from Adobe, Victoria and Katie. How are you? Hey there. It's good to be here. Good to have yes, you. Yes, great to be uh, here. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> absolutely. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us and the rest of the world spreading some After Effects goodness and some new things that you may or may not so, or maybe you've missed in the new version. But before getting into the pushing button um, thing that we are going to do, every one of us, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. So who wants to start? Just an elevator brief. What we are, what you are doing. <laughs> Katie, why don't you go first? Sounds good. I have just full disclosure, no visual cues on right now. So I appreciate the audible cue. Um, <laughs> my my name is Katie no. Bass. I am a product manager on the After Effects team. I have been on the team since summer 2021, but I was also on the team in a less official manner as an intern in the summer of 2020. Um, so I am really excited to be here and show you the property panel, which is what I have been working on for a significant amount of time with uh, the engineering team. Looking forward to see it. And Victoria, how about you? So hi, everyone. I'm Victoria Nice. Uh, I'm the other product manager at After Effects, and I've been with the team for seven years now. And before that, I was a motion designer myself. So I've been using After Effects pretty much my entire life at this point. Uh, and I'm also very excited to be here and talk about some of the cool things that we have on the way. That's amazing. I always say to you know the people that I'm in front of that I spend more time with After Effects than with my wife. And she knows it. She agree. <laughs> um, it's not the best recipe for good marriage, but we are celebrating 13 years together. So I guess it's fine. Somehow it works for us. Yeah. So not today. This is not the anniversary. I just, you know, managed to get in some dead joke before we start. So anyhow, um, enough with the chit chat. Let's continue with it during the interface. So we're going to start with you, Katie. Are you ready? Um, ready oh, I am Here ready. You come. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So good morning, everybody. I'm trusting that you can see my screen here. I am currently in After Effects 2023.4, which is the release that came out about two weeks ago. Um, and our big news, well, one of the big items that we're here to talk about with 23.4 is the properties panel. So you'll see here that I have a lower third open. It says Malia Mocha Caffeine Queen. It's got a zigzag. It's got a coffee bean. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to select this zigzag line layer. And if you look on the right hand or my right hand side, it might be your left side of the screen. Um, you'll see that I have this panel pop up and this is our properties panel. And what it is, is it's a contextual menu. I'll make it a little wider just so people can see. It's a contextual menu that shows the most used properties. We've got layer transforms up here. So I'm on the zigzag line. Let's say I want to give it a really obvious kind of, kind of obnoxious rotation. Let's have it rotate three times. Um, so from here, I want it to rotate zero so between those two keyframes which i did just keyframe from within the properties panel i have come on buddy i also don't have the strongest machine so i apologize for any slowdowns that we've got here but it does not want to play back which is fun and exciting but you'll see that if i manually scrub um, it will do that rotation, which I did entirely, that layer transform entirely from within the properties panel. Another cool thing is if you double click in the properties panel, and I'll do that again here, just so you can see, um, I've double clicked here and it's opened up that shape in the timeline. So it's a really great shortcut. 
uh, for just jumping in and making additional changes for properties that don't necessarily appear in the properties panel. Another great thing is shape properties. So we've got our stroke color here. This is a really easy, obvious change that I can make for everybody viewing. I'm gonna select the stroke color. I wanna turn this yellow, this zigzag line. That's a little more chartreuse. Oh, well, that's kind of pretty. Let's go with that. So I have now changed it to yellow. And like with the layer transforms, you can actually keyframe that color change too if you want. You can change your stroke width. So I'm going to drag this to be 34th of an extra. But let's go to 8. So it's a little bit thicker. And I can also do my shape transforms here as well. So if I just want to do that rotation instead of on the layer level, on the shape le level, I can do that here. And I'll go back and make that a zero rotation. And I'll scrub it. And now it looks extra ridiculous, but we've done it all within the properties panel. So another very cool thing about the properties panel and being a text nerd myself, my personal favorite is that you can actually do your text properties in the properties panel as well. So right now we've got Helvetica new as the font. I'm on the name layer, so Olia Mocha, let's put this in a different font. Let's go with Haas Round. Um, so that was really easy, didn't have to open the character or paragraph panel. I can change my font size. Um, I can change my font fill. So let's say we wanna go back just plain old black here. Can do that really easily. You can add stroke. Um, paragraph settings are all here. Or if you don't wanna see all of these paragraph settings, what I can do is I can just click this less button and it'll show fewer properties for you. So if you don't wanna see all of that extra uh, properties, if you're not working in really detailed paragraphs, for example, or working in languages other than English that need a little bit further adjustment, you just hit that less button. So that is the properties panel as it exists in 23.4. In a nutshell, um, we do have essential properties in the properties panel currently in beta. Um, so that's not currently visible within uh, the version that I'm using now. But if you go into our free public beta, you can do some really cool stuff um, like media replacement in the properties panel. You can adjust your text and fonts from as an essential property, which is brand new to After Effects. Um, so please check that out in the public beta. And that is the properties panel. That's amazing. I mean, first, um, I welcome you, everyone who is watching the broadcast to ask questions and participate. I'm going to ask a question on behalf of someone that asked me this question yesterday. I know the answer, but I want to see if you know it too. How <laughs> to hide the properties panel if for some reason you don't want to see it? Because there's a little bit of a gotcha here. Well, yeah. If you don't want to see the properties panel, you can just click this hamburger menu right here in the corner and click close panel. And that's it. But if you want it back, right now it's in our default workspace. So what you can do is if you're like, oh, no, I closed the properties panel. I don't know how to open it again, which full disclosure, I do this a lot. Um, you can go up to this workspaces area here click the hamburger menu next to default, click reset to saved layout. And as long as you haven't over, uh, saved over the default workspace, that'll just bring everything back for you. That's amazing. I think I know the trick yeah, question about this question though. Yeah, and I, I have a hunch that it's that you can close the panel and it'll keep coming back. That's and it. That's what they're asking about. Yes, uh, so exactly. That you need to uncheck auto open panels. So there, there is a sneaky trick. If you decided you don't want this, you want the character and paragraph panels, maybe you have a million third-party scripts, you have a very complex interface, uh, you can uncheck that box and it will no longer pop open when you start using the type tool, uh, which is the time that it tends to pop up automatically because it's, it's designed to come to the forefront when you reach for the type tool. You want to do some text. And, and I must call say, out, yeah. thanks. Thank you. That this is it. I was I was aiming for this. So thank you for catching <laughs> the uh, very weird throw. Anyhow, I just want to say that you know I'm a bit biased, of course, because I'm using it for a long time and did you know my two cents here in terms of feedback. But I think that Adobe did a great job with 
really the way it's organized. It's not big. It's not wasting any space. It's contextual, meaning that compare it to the properties panel we have in other applications, hint, hint, InDesign or Illustrator, which takes almost a third of the screen and basically not misplacing too much of, uh, um, like, like not giving you a lot of, of, of new information. This is really nicely integrated into the application so much that it is almost self-explanatory. So this is why I think it's so good. I'm actually curious, since you're a trainer, uh, if you think this is going to change the way that you teach After Effects. Um, I think I will be able to answer this. You know, I think, I mean, short answer, yes. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm always trying to include it, and, and, and but you know, to be honest, I need to to see how people will react to this. So, I, I, I tend to push it. I think it's, it's really great, and I also love the hidden features, like you know, you can right click on stuff over there, and and also access some things that you know people are maybe missing. So, except of like you know, moving between keyframes and stuff that are obvious, you can actually add them to the essential property. Uh, essential graphics as a property. So there's like, you know, tons of stuff which are, um, I'm not going to say buried, but are not like, you know, visible at the first glance, which is good, which is very good. So as always, always right click, option click on stuff. You will be surprised. <laughs> That's one of the best pieces of After Effects advice in general. Option click or alt click and just see what happens. There's so many hidden features hiding under that button. Yeah, so Absolutely. Kyle, which... You probably know, I'm just going to add his comments to the broadcast. He's saying that, uh, and hi, Kyle, so good to have you here. Uh, it's already changing his, you know, workflow. So this is great. That's great to hear. And if you have any requests for what you want the future of the properties panel to be, put those on our forum. We are reading them. We are considering them. Um, we want to take our time and see what people are thinking before we dive right into the next thing. So yeah, this is a great time to tell us, hey, I love this aspect, but I would love if it could do something different. This is the best time to tell us. So what, and essential properties. From... The, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was saying that, you know, people are reacting in real time. And uh, Amit is saying that uh, he wished something similar will be in Premiere Pro. Who knows? Maybe you are from the future. We'll see about it. We'll, we can't comment we'll on see. things which are, I don't know. What that's do you actually say? a great, that's a great thing to let the Premier team know. And uh, I think we, we've had some similar conversations internally, uh, but they would love to see that there's a user need for that and that people are interested in it because that's one of the things that really drives decision making. And so if, if you go into our beta forums and post I would like to see this in Premiere. I want a properties panel in Premiere Pro. Here's how I'd like it to work. Uh, not only will the team see that, but other users will see those posts and can upvote them and add their own thoughts. Uh, and that's one of the ways that we take in input that's been incredibly valuable. And it's really helped drive what we've done with the properties panel over time. Uh, it has a lot more in it now than it did when it first went into beta. And that's thanks to that feedback. 100%. And, and I think a, a, a lot more is coming, right? Yes, more is coming. So as I was saying earlier, essential properties in the properties panel that is currently in the public beta and I'm using the 23.4 release version, which is why I didn't show that to you because it's not available yet. Later this summer, I would recommend keeping an eye out on your updates um, and there may be an exciting surprise for you in the essential properties department. Okay. Yeah, I've got the beta running, so I could demo that really quickly. Oh yeah. That, that would be let, great. Let's do yeah. it. Let's let's switch to um, Victoria's screen, which should be this one. Hold on. It's a bit of a black yeah. screen, but here you go. There we go. You can see cool. you twice. This is good enough, I think. You'll see, you'll see yeah. I have exactly the same project here. And yeah. one of the things that's in this project is this little jumping coffee bean. And we've added some jitter to make it really bouncy. It's got some caffeine in it. Uh, and we could we could make it really, really bouncy if we wanted. We can update the jitter amount. This is a pre-comp. It's an image sequence of little coffee beans. We can make it really bounce around all over the place. Or we could say, you know what, that's kind of cheesy. Let's turn that off entirely. Let's just take that down to zero. And so without having to open up that composition, I'm able to change that. So now it's not jumping outside of this frame. 
Uh, I could also say, you know, what, we're going to just tone this whole thing down. Uh, let's, ah, my color picker's on the other screen. There it is. Uh, let's tone this down and actually make this like a coffee bean colored coffee bean. Maybe we want to do that. Uh, that's something I can do again without opening this composition. All the properties I was just changing here are actually inside this beans comp. And so they're all here either in this adjustment layer or uh, further down in one of these little bean layers. And so I can add things to this panel by going to the essential graphics panel. And here I've got the jitter frequency and amount and color. Uh, let's let's just, I don't know, let's add something really quick here. I'm just gonna add a, a fast blur um, just so we can add something here, very simple. I'm gonna add this blur radius and I'm gonna right click and say add to essential graphics. So now it's in the essential graphics panel. I can adjust if these beans are blurry here. Uh, but when I go back to my other composition, that same blur option is going to show up right here. And so now without even having to open that pre-comp, I can simply go in here and make an adjustment. Not that I need a blurry coffee bean, but it's a it's a really quick way to surface the stuff that you care about that could be 10 pre-comps down. You can add things from anything in your in your compositing chain, surface them up. And then if you reuse a layer, like if I had lots of these coffee beans, Every one of them can have different settings with essential properties. So it's a super powerful workflow and it's a way with the properties panel to customize what's in the panel and put the stuff that's most important to you front and center. So useful. Um, it's also super helpful for templating within After Effects, for example. Oh, yeah. So let's say you've got this lower third that you want to make multiple versions of. Um, you can assign essential properties to the properties panel, make changes in a different comp using that. Um, and it's non-destructive. So you can go back to your original lower third and you'll see that all of the changes that you'd made um, using essential properties didn't affect the source comp at all. And I've got these little push and pull buttons here. Actually, they're behind us, our, our little video squares. Uh, these buttons let you either say, you know what, I want every copy of this little coffee bean to be blurry, or you know what, I don't, I didn't mean to blur this. Why did I do that? And I can pull the original value back from that primary composition and now I can reset really quickly. Or I could say, you know what, I want every bean to be blurry. If I push that value up when I open that pre-comp, you'll see that the whole pre-comp is now blurry. So you, you've got the ability to push and pull values throughout your entire project structure. This is so, so, this, so this useful is, and, and it's so, so fun to play with and save so much time. Like essential properties is just the new pre-comping in After Effects. This is the way to go. If you're not using it, you are just working too hard. This is what I'm going to say. Yeah, I'd agree. It's one of my all-time favorite features. It, it yeah. really changed the way I work. Yeah, really, really, really game changer. Not as AI, but uh, no, the text best thing. <laughs> Um, since we have you live with the screen, would you like to share, by the way, just, just a, a little teaser. We are going to also show the open color IO and I'm going to try to make it as sexy as possible. And we also have some surprises. Um, so stick until the end. I'm going to show you, we are going to talk about the new things that just came out last week, I guess, or this week to the beta. So, um, yeah, just, you know, make sure that people are going to stick with us. It's going to be even more boring for those of you who don't understand, but for those of you who are, are still with us, let's just hop back to uh, Victoria's screen, which is not this one. Um, um, let's just see what happens. Here you, ah, here you go. Here um, yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, we wanted to talk about the effect manager. Yeah. Uh, this is now here under manage effects. Uh, this is one of my favorite new features, even if it's a little bit hidden and it's a feature you may not need to use that much. That's the goal. Uh, right now I have this set to only show third party effects and I have a vanilla install of After Effects here, so there's nothing, uh, but I can uncheck that and I can see every effect that is available with After Effects. It's a pretty long list. Uh, and here, from here I can enable and disable effects. Uh, I could search for something like, let's say I search for matte and see all of my different matte effects. Uh, so it lets you just see what you have available here. Uh, but there's also a piece of this that is really designed, not so much for you to just manage effects which can be really helpful if, uh, for instance, you're working with a partner or a client where you need to make sure not to use certain third party effects that they don't have access to. That's a really common reason you might want to turn something off. Uh, but there's a couple other columns here that are pretty important. Uh, one of them is this last crashed column. And if you have a third party effect that crashed uh, for the first time, After Effects can say, 
when you relaunch, hey, I think this effect might have crashed. Do you want to disable this? Do you want to continue? Uh, what do you want to do here? It gives you the option, but it also it lets you know what's going on. It's giving you information you've never had access to. Uh, and what that lets us do is share that crash data with our partners and say, hey, we've got users crashing with this one effect. Here's what's happening. Here's where that here's where the problem is for the first time. We've never been able to have this level of detail and clarity that we can share. Uh, and I just saw yesterday uh, for the first time we've just had a plug in that this panel identified was crashing. Uh, they've just pushed an update. So that's already happening. Uh, and so this is a big part of our commitment to making sure that After Effects is as rock solid as possible and just in general commitment to quality and stability and to empowering you to figuring out what's going on. Uh, there's a thing I've, I've a colleague at another company has referred to as superstitious troubleshooting, where you have an issue and you don't know what it is. Uh, so you maybe you tried re replacing your preferences or turning off GPU rendering, or maybe it's this effect, they'll turn off all my effects. This is the kind of thing that gives you information to actually know what's going on. And there's a little more beyond this too. It's not just about effects. And if I go into my preferences and I can show you, we have a new preferences section called startup and repair. And again, it's on my other screen and I have to go pull it in one second. I just bring there you we go. screen to the, to the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All my menus are opening on my other monitor. <laughs> uh, so this is super powerful. And there's a new thing called safe mode. And if, if you're experiencing some kind of issue, you can start in safe mode. And what that's going to do is temporarily restart with default preferences and with all of your plugins unloaded. So you can see if what's going on is related to potentially your plugins or your preferences it can, or if there's something else happening, like maybe a GPU driver. Uh, this is a really powerful new way to solve problems and without having to go to IT and be like, hey, I'm having an issue. Um, so we're, we're really excited about these. Uh, and it's also going to give you the ability to uh, do this automatically if you've run into an issue. When After Effects relaunches, it'll say, do you want to start in safe mode? Uh, so these aren't just buried in menus. We'll prompt you if you've run into an issue. Uh, so they're great new features that we hope you don't have to use, <laughs> weirdly enough. My two pennies here um, is that as a trainer, it is so cool that I can disable the third party effects when I'm teaching someone and just work with After Effects Vanilla and uh, you know just bring it back to out of the box situation and and this is really really amazing i hope we'll have the same thing the same functionality in other applications such as premiere maybe also audition this is so good um, those of you who are really using a lot of um, i mean using after effects for a long time remember the, we used to have this hidden thing that you can disable effects by adding the grav, grave tilde key in front of their names doesn't work anymore. So this is just amazing. This Thank is the you way to it. do it now. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love these features and I love anything that empowers users to uh, figure out what's going on, solve their own, solve their own situations. Like, I think that's, I think that's a really big time saver. Excellent. Um, would you like to demo anything else or should I move to my? Let's see yours. I, I'd love to see your demo of Open Color IO. Excellent. This is yeah, me that, too. I, I always feel it. like it's hard to demo. And so I'm super curious how you're <laughs> going to do it. It is hard to demo. So um, there is like an elephant in the room actually under the bridge. This was shot in the pandemic, I guess. So you can actually get this shot if you like. So we'll wait for you to download it. It's number 339. No, I'm just kidding. Anyhow, <laughs> I already did the heavy lifting here. So this shot was tracked inside After Effects using the 3D camera tracker. And as you can see, I have something that I brought from Cinema 4D. I know you're curious to see this elephant. So this is how it looks. It breathes a little bit. It waves its ears. Very, very nice elephant. You can almost feel whatever he's doing. Anyhow, this is beyond the point. I just want to switch for a moment to Cinema 4D where I actually created this. And I'm going to hide our icons for a moment, just leave it with mine. And you can see that the colors here, take a look at the render. I'm using the Redshift, obviously, to render it. So the colors between Cinema and After Effects are totally wrong. They are not the same. Um, and this is due to the fact that by default, if I go to the render settings, 
And I'm using again render renderer, the Redshift renderer, just to be sure. By default, a lot of those renderers, it's the same for Octane and also from other systems like Blender and um, Maya and 3ds Max. By default, these days, they are using the Aces color space, which is just a fancy way of saying, we are going to organize your colors. We are going to manage this for you. This is the Academy color something system. I always forget the E. Um, never mind. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just a way to make sure that colors are going to be consistent from the um, acqu acquiring stage, I guess, from uh, w when you shoot it and edit it and obviously 3D CG and until delivery. And you can think about it almost like a lookup table, but it's a bit more complex. I'm not going to get into the math behind it. I'm just going to name this as a something which is baked or part of the workflow by default. And if I'll just quickly go to the AOV, and this is something that you know you need to set when you are rendering your files here inside Cinema, and I'll click on the Show AOV Manager. I have a few passes here, and those passes are something that will help us to compose it. So I just want to choose some real case scenario and to show you why this is so important. Uh, because obviously we can take a look at the different passes over here, and we can see, I'm just going to close it. We barely can see there's a reflection here. There's a shadow pass. doesn't really matter. The important thing here to bear in mind is when we are bringing it back to After Effects, now After Effects can actually speak the same language. And it's so simple. I did a lot, a long buildup, but this is how simple it is. But there is also a gotcha like every time uh, and everything. So I'm going to click on this button. This is the color chip I'm calling it. So basically this is the way you change the color depth. And the reason I like to click on it and not go to the file project settings is because I'm going to be directed automatically to the relevant tab, which is the color tab. Now by default, if you didn't say anything, After Effects is going to be managed using the Adobe Color Managed. But I can switch it now to the Open Color I.O. Color Managed. And it's going to tell me that it's going to have a huge impact on everything. I'm going to say, okay, thank you. And since I'm here, I might as well change the bit depth to 32 bits per channel. Just makes sense to work in this. And notice that everything is being disabled here because when you are switching to this, you are always working on a linear with a linear color space. So basically you are um, being managed. I mean, everything is going to be taken care of for you. And you can see there is also a pop-up menu with the, the open color IO configuration. So this is what it sets by default, but you can switch it to different things or you can bring your own custom stuff if this offends you in some way. Anyhow, I'm going to just leave it like this. And I'm just going to click OK. Also notice that we are going to compensate for the display. Since everyone has different display mode or different displays, we can work with REC, which is the shortcut for recommendation. 2020 or other stuff, usually you're going to stick with what you had inside Cinema 4D. So these are the settings. These are the default settings. I'm going to click OK, and I'm just going to show you that you have access to the same thing over here. And our elephant now looks the same. So if I'm going to pop up between those two applications, hopefully you can see we have similar, similar colors in terms of the CGI render. However, and this is the gacha, after Effects assume that everything is ACES right now. So in other words, if you're working with other clips from different vendors, different cameras, you need to make sure that you are going to interpret them correctly. And by the way, I'm going to have an in-depth tutorial about everything in, I guess, two weeks. So if this is not enough information for you, make sure to check my YouTube channel in like 10 days or so. But for now, just to do a quick Shortcut, I'm going to open up this file, which is the video file that we're seeing here. It's not in interpreted correctly. You can see that this is the wrong profile, I know. So I'll click on the interpret footage button. This is this guy over here. And I'll go to the color option. And in this case, I think this should be, you've got like, you know, first make sure to tick the show all. So you get access to all the cameras, all the options, the chips with After Effects. You just need to find the one that uh, works with your clip. So in my case, I'm going to go with the seven, uh, this one, I think. Let's try this and see how this works. No, this is not the right one. And 
the beauty of this, and I did this mistake by uh, in purpose, is that since this preview check mark is ticked, I can actually check it before I'm leaving this dialog. So I don't need to guess, click OK, go back to the project, preview the file. I can actually see the entire thing from this menu. And this is a godsend, this little check mark. So let's say that this is something, and of course, I mean, if you don't know, you can just you know switch between different ones until you find something that looks correct. I'm going to stick with this Rec 709. And now everything looks hunky-dory, as the late David Bowie used to say. And what is really important is that this is going to not only work beautifully here inside After Effects with everything that you are working, but it's also going to bake this into the render file. And this is something that you need to pay attention to. I'm just going to demonstrate it really quickly by adding this to the render queue. And I'm going to choose definitely not H.264, but something a bit more high quality, such as high quality, which is the best preset because it uses the Apple ProRes. You probably want to go with the high quality codec, but for now, it doesn't really matter. What's important is that you can see the profile of the project is going to be baked into the file, meaning that it's going to look perfect inside After Effects and other compositing applications. But if you're going to play it from the desktop, it's also going, it's not going to look good. So just bear this in mind. You're baking the project, uh, the profile into the clip. And of course, you can always interpret it differently, but this is just to save you some time. So for you guys who are working in the film industry or just want a better management of colors, which is going to save you a lot of headaches, and it's really going to deliver the colors consistently throughout your uh, whatever devices you are using, this is the way to go. And this is my spiel about this topic, a bit boring and technical, but hopefully now everybody understands what it does. <laughs> well, I found it very exciting. So thank, thank you. you for that. <laughs> and it, uh, it really is an important thing for when you're part of that larger pipeline. You have stuff coming yeah. in from a whole bunch of different camera formats combined with CG elements, and maybe those are even from multiple products coming in. It's a way to get everything into one unified space with this ultra wide gamut so that no matter what format you're delivering to at the end, uh, you can create lots of different versions from that. So HDR, standard definition, all standard dynamic range, all of that. Uh, and your project files maintain that wide color space so that even if you come back in the future and say, wait, now we need to make an HDR version of this, the color data will be there. And that's, that's an important piece of why Open Color I.O. is so important, is to have that industry standard. Yeah, and for those of you who did it before, you probably understand or remember that you need to add some adjustment layers to compensate and then use some third-party solutions. Um, it was painful. To, uh, it was a, like a really big, a, a huge headache, I'm just, you know, just saying. So anyhow, it's really I actually remember me. hearing a story about some... Uh, a studio, I believe, that was using a seven-page document to onboard their, their color uh, correction team uh, in After Effects. So we went from seven pages to, what, four or five clicks? It's pretty incredible. Wow. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, a, it's really brilliant. And I, I, I hope and I guess Adobe is going to continue developing it. So uh, um, maybe in the future, it will recognize automatically the profile the correct profile colors for other clips, which are not in the same. This is like my only criticism between friends here. Um, but other than that, it's really great. That's something actually that uh, Open Color IO is looking at is standardizing some of that auto recognition stuff. Uh, you can set custom interpretation rules for different formats. Uh, and also, if you're working in a studio pipeline, you might get a config file that has some of that built in with the expected content that's coming in. Uh, oh. So there's ways that you can do some of that today if you have an established pipeline. Uh, but there's, this is because this is industry sh shared industry standards. Uh, there's also things that going forward we can look at as not just an After Effects feature, but Open Color IO generally. Uh, yeah, as as Amit is saying, I'm just going to bring his comment under your window, so it will be easier for you to read. I know it's very tiny, but we need to it's squeeze everything tiny. here. Uh, he says that it doesn't come with Premiere Pro. Let me just pop it again. 
uh, from what he knows. And uh, this means that, you know, he need to do some stuff manually inside Premiere Pro. I know that from yep. experience, Premiere Pro is like dealing with it differently in terms of, you know, SDR, HDR and other stuff. So maybe, you know, it will be merged together at some point in the future. It should be. Yeah, that, that's the ultimate goal. We started with After Effects because with After Effects, you've got stuff coming in and stuff going back out, whereas Premiere is very often the destination. And so we said, yeah. if we're doing Open Color AO, we have to start with the app where both input and out export need to be color managed. Uh, so we've started with After Effects, but that doesn't mean we're staying with After Effects. We had to start somewhere. Wonderful news. And I've frozen on a terrible you freeze frozen, frame. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> ter no, let's, let's there just, we go. Yeah, that's better. Here you are. Back to your regular you. <laughs> um, we have some time. So would you like to speak about the beta and the future of what's coming yeah. in the you know, dark corridor of After Effects? Not dark, light corridor. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's definitely not a dark corridor. In fact, the, beta, no, no, the whole know, point know, of the beta is it's not a secret. It's, I was and just it's, working it's on us. some some eerie uh, project yesterday. So, you know, I was like, you know, generating some dark um, things before we met. So probably stick to my mind. Scrap this. The bright future of After Effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Katie, you want to talk a little bit about how the beta, pro how, how we use the beta, how it works, how people can get access? Absolutely. And let me, let, while we do that, let me pull up my Creative Cloud desktop app so I can show you. Um, but here we go. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share my Creative Cloud window. So you can also see that I have not updated my Creative Cloud desktop app. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it does this, this convenient thing where it will pop up and say, hey, update your Creative Cloud desktop app. But Creative Cloud Desktop is the one true source for all of our beta apps, Creative Cloud wide. Um, all of our beta apps are public. They are available for you to use. So as long as you know, you're if in the event you're on like a company managed account, as long as your IT department isn't restricting your access to it, you are free to come and test out what's in there. So if you look on this panel here, it's the left hand side for me. It might be the right hand side for you if we're mirrored. Um, I'm going to select beta apps. So once I click into that, I've got this great ad for generative fill in Photoshop. The future is here, um, which actually reminds me I should install the Photoshop beta so that I can play with that. Um, but you'll also see my installed beta apps. So I have Premiere Pro, After Effects, Character Animator, Media Encoder, basically everything you'd expect an After Effects product manager to have. But I can also scroll down and install the Photoshop beta, which I will do today, but not right now. Um, I've got Audition beta, XD beta, InDesign. So every, every application that has a public beta, you can find right here. And once again, free to use, open to the public. It's a side-by-side -side installation with your main release. So anything, any settings that you set in the beta will not be destructive to the settings that you set in the main release. And that's really important because we might, you know, have some new features that require some different settings. And we don't want you to be in a situation where you feel like you're compromising by participating in our beta. Because for us, it's really important for you to use the beta from our perspective, because this is how we start previewing things that we're working on. So some of you here may have been members of the public beta and will know that properties panel was in the public beta for a long time. And the reason for that was because we were taking active feedback from our beta users and we were implementing that actively. Um, and we still are in some degrees. Um, so this is our key way of getting feedback from our users like, hey, is this feature ready for prime time? So one of the ways that we knew that the properties panel was ready was when we started getting questions from our beta users saying, hey, why isn't this out yet? We're so ready for it, we're so excited. So we really do take that feedback to heart. And, and one other thing that's important to add there is your project files are compatible. So you can go back and forth from the beta to the release version and you shouldn't run into any issues with that. Uh, we really designed this to be a separate experience and it's actually our daily developer builds. Uh, we update this every day and these are genuinely the behind the scenes. This is what we're building and we're doing it in public. 
because we want to give you access to things as soon as possible because we want to make them work for you. And this isn't designed just to be, hey, check if there's bugs. This is designed to be, make sure this is actually working for your workflow. That's the part that's the most meaningful for us. And so we, we've got some pretty exciting things in there in beta right now. And I know Iran has been experimenting with one of the things that just came out last week. Yeah, actually, I mean, I can show it to you. I'm not sure if it is tutorial worthy, but it's definitely a live worthy demonstration. <laughs> I think it's um, pretty so, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Actually, we met last week. We were in Islington here in London. And uh, Victoria told me, did, did you know about this thing that you can just duplicate stuff inside After Effects? Almost like a more graph. I don't know, animator, but with 3D layers. So Adidas didn't pay me to do this. I'm just, you know, trying to make it real, as real as possible. Um, but, you know, this works with any shoe company, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just <laughs> going to show you, uh, running basically through Victoria idea, how I build this. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to start from this, you know, from, from beginning. Let's just create a new comp and drag. And by the way, of course, I'm using the latest beta here. So um doesn't really matter the version, but you know, you can get the beaker icon to tell you all the new stuff about it. Um, so I'm just, you know, downloading, not download, I downloaded already this shoe, which is the 3D model. And we can take a look around and you can see it's from different direction, which is like, you know, the new 3D gizmo. Let's see what's inside. Yes, it looks good. Pretty, pretty, pretty clean. All right, so I'll just, you know, zero everything out and just find myself a nice angle, let's say something over here, I don't know. And then I'm going to add a new solid. I'm going to name it White Solid One, the most popular name inside After Effects. Actually, let's call it Render View. Make it more, you know, official. Um, I don't know why I've picked gray. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to show you how you can cancel the gray. But for the moment, um, I'll double click on this to reset it to my preferred workflow. And uh, what I'm missing here is the effects and presets. So let's just make sure that we can see them. And I'll add the calculation effect. And the calculation effect can actually read other layers. And basically, it's just... a uh, effect that can help you to mix a couple of layers and please correct me if I'm wrong, plus some blending mode. So just the utility effect that a lot of people are not using. Anyhow, I'm going to say, please use this thing and I'm going to tell it to take the 100 opacity from the second layer. So the input is going to be the same, but the second layer that I'm going to put above it is basically the same thing. I'll switch off the visibility for this one so we are not going to see double. Now, if I want to see uh, the alpha channel, I'll need to duplicate the calculation effects and just change the blending mode. I think it is stencil alpha, if I remember correctly. It is. So now I'm the just getting The other way to do the... it is on the first one, if you change your input channel to alpha and then just check in input. Uh, over here. Invert input. Yeah, check that. Okay. That should okay. do it. Yeah, it that's is. the cheatier way to do it. There's there's always 10 ways to do everything. I'm absolutely amazing. I'm learning as I demonstrate. This is, you know, this is what happens when you're doing it with the project manager in front of you. I'm a bit stressed now, so hopefully, you know, <laughs> a buoy. Anyhow, I always learn uh, stuff from your tutorials. You, you show me stuff I didn't even realize is in the product I've been using most of my life. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so um, I'll just add, let's say, uh, back over here, let's add HLS. And by that, I mean the color balance effect. And you'll see the method to my madness in a moment. I'm just going to leave this one um, for the time being. And then I'll select this one. And I'm actually going to uh, show the properties for the rotation. So I'll press R and I'll option click because I'm working on the Mac, you can guess what it is on the Windows side. Anyhow, um, I'm just going to take the index of the layer and maybe add, I don't know, 50 degrees to this. Um, so this is, and really it doesn't really matter, but you know, maybe I was like too generous. Let's go with 30. So every time I'll duplicate this, it's just going to continue to do this thing. And you know, because I think we need a bit more 
um, rotations, let's multiply it instead of adding it. So now we are going to get this number when I'm duplicating the layer. All right, I'm also going to do the same for the hue here. So double click to expose this in the timeline. Option click and you know what? Let's just copy the same thing to see what happens. So now every time I'm going to duplicate it, it's going to rotate, rotate with W of course, rotate the view. Now the cool thing here, if I'll use a very secret combination to create a camera settings, which is all the modifiers with the letter C, so mesh your fist basically, and I'm going <laughs> to move the camera. It's actually going to read the 3Dness of the stuff. Everything is going to work. I can also use the two comp expression, which is going to give me some more freedom to do stuff and move it. It's, you can see that at some point it's going to cut the uh, thing here because it's not really working with the same 3D space. And this is basically what I did over here. So if I'm going to take a look by double tapping the letter E, you can see that for the position, I was too lazy to do this with two lines. I'm just pointing to the same layer, which is the 3D model, and then adding the two comp expression. So this is like, you know, a very, very old trick to just compensate for the, um, basically create a 3D position out of a 2D or, or applying the 2D position, uh, the 3D position to the 2D value. Anyhow, um, this helped us to create something which looks really cool. And all I did over here is just, you know, I can show you, I moved the, uh, I animated the camera basically. And so similar setup, uh, the Adidas layer is just breaking this 3D um, order because basically it is a 3D layer, but because I applied to it, if you are curious, what I did under the hood here, the repeater, just to break the illusion and create another thing here, every time I'm going to move it, it's just going to hide one of the layers of the shoe. And this allow me to just integrate it a little bit more interesting into the shot here. And because we are using the new Mercury engine, and by the way, you can open the, I'm, I'm using the 40 quality, which I think is quite nice, but you can take it all the way up to 300, whatever that means. And you can make it look as nice as the 3D render itself. And you can see it's very, very fast. So this is in a nutshell, just one thing that you can do with the new capability of bringing 3D elements into After Effects. And obviously everything is being affected by lights here. So just to show if I'm going to switch off one of the lights, we are going to fake shadows and other stuff just with a simple point light. So this is all referencing the original model. I can still access it and I can modify, let's say the scale of it or the rotation. And because those are all duplicates, let's just switch off the Adidas. They didn't pay us. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to tell everyone what it is. So let's just return over here. And you can see that, you know, if I'm going to uh, change the original layer, everything is going to ripple through. This is so, so cool. Yeah. It's just so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can also use the same ways of feeding uh, 3D models of the 2D effects to do sort of like tune shading and super non photo real rendering and basically apply effects to models like you're doing here with the color. You can, you can really get crazy with this. Uh, I, I'm very excited to see what people do because this is it's only been out about a week and you could already make stuff like this. Yeah, it's amazing. And I, I, I must fun. tell you that, you know, thinking about this, also look at how fast it is. I'm just going to not do anything. So After Effects is going to cache those frames after eight seconds. You can see this is really, really responsive. And I really thought about how I can achieve it without any third party effects or without going to cinema. And... I don't think there is a way, not a simple way. Of course, we can duplicate the same model over and over again, and we can pre-comp it, uh, but this is really, really nice. And by the way, if you're curious, the uh, background is just a 2D layer with the ramp effect, and I'm animating the colors, so it would look as if it's moving with this, just a simple cheat. Um, let's just maximize it so we can enjoy the render.
very very nice that's super all cool. right that's it I'm plugging it's hypnotic so much. yes <laughs> Okay, I think that this is it for now. Um, thank you so much for spending this morning, afternoon, whatever, the day with me. I'm going to say the day with me because it feels like, you know, um, feels very good. So thank you so much for your wisdom and for the demonstrations and uh, for the news. And uh, yes, it's going to be very exciting in the near future. This is what I can tell you, right? There are a yeah. lot of other you got a sneak peek at some things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stay tuned to the beta. There's some exciting stuff on the way. Yeah, we'll, the team we'll is have to leave it very, at that. Very, very hard. So yeah, amazing. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much, everyone, and uh, I'm going to see you soon in real life, maybe. Who knows? Or in another tutorial. Probably this is what's going to be uh, happening. Um, be safe. Take care, and uh, goodbye. Cheers. Bye-bye for now.